Thank you very much, Your Excellency, President Dr. William Ruto, President of the Republic of Kenya, Your Excellency Azali Azumani, President of the Union of Comoros and Chairperson of the African Union, Excellencies, Heads of State and Government, Your Excellency Musa Faki Muhammad, Chairperson of the African Union Commission, Your Excellency Antonio Guterres, United Nations Secretary General, Your Excellency Patricia Scotland, the Secretary General for Commonwealth, Your Excellency First Ladies, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. I'm pleased to address this high-level session of the African Climate Summit 2023 under the Kenyan presidency and to reaffirm Sierra Leone's commitment to scale up climate action urgently. I must thank His Excellency President William Ruto and the government of the Republic of Kenya for the excellent arrangements made for this summit as Africans, African countries seek to address climate change priorities in this critical decade. From Costa Kisses with the Atlantic Ocean to the panoramic vis vista, from the towering king of the mountains, the Loma Mountain, to our sprawling national parks, Sierra Leone is a canvas painted with nature's most vibrant hues. Our golden beaches are a testament to nature's artistry. Your Excellencies, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, if you've not been to Sierra Leone, I'm inviting you to come. However, beneath our nation's beauty lies an unmistakable urgency. With a median age of just over 19 years, our young population, like the other young populations representing Africa's vibrant future, stand at a defining crossroads. Their legacy, and indeed our collective legacy, is shaped by the choices we make today. The seas once serenading us with gentle lullabies, now one of rising tides that could erase generational achievements. The rains which celebrated our lands now pose a looming threat why Sierra Leone is a rich, is rich with nature's gift. This very geographical splendor renders us vulnerable. Climate change for us isn't a distant shadow. Climate projections in Sierra Leone include temperature increases, extreme weather conditions, intense precipitation, and rising sea levels. Our shores, symbols of natural grandeur, are receding. Many of our communities face displacement, and our pristine beaches risk fading away, and calamities like landslide and floods have become hauntingly regular. The surge in pests and diseases is another testament to our enduring imbalance. Without swift collective action, we risk witnessing the obliteration of Sierra Leone's invaluable ecosystems, leading to further disloc dislocation of our communities and the devastation of their sources of sustenance. This is not just a Sierra Leone story. It is an African story. And I dare say it is a global story too. Your Excellencies, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, our world is in trouble. 
But our continent is even more so. The evidence is clear. The time for action is now. But we are running out of time. Grounded in this stark reality, my government remains unwavering in our commitment to fortifying climate resilience, ensuring our people thrive sustainably and harmoniously with nature. In our updated nationally determined commitment, Sierra Leone has defined a progressive pathway forward for cutting greenhouse gases emission from the 2005 levels by 5%, 5 percent, 5 percent by 2025, 10 percent by 2030, and 25 percent by 2050. My government is unyieldingly devoted to climate change resilience and adaptation. This includes support for community-based adaptation in agriculture and energy sectors, integrated water resource management, and climate change disaster risk management. We are also poised to improve meteorological services for early warning systems and enhance and protect conservation of natural habitats and ecosystems. Furthermore, our climate change mitigation strategies extend to promoting renewable energy, infrastructure, resilience, and extensive reforestation efforts on at least 960,000 hectares of land. As we engage in country planning, we will also prioritize low carbon screening. Excellencies, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. To reaffirm our commitment, we have institutionalized efforts against global menace, this global menace. We have established a dedicated Ministry of Environment and Climate Change and a Climate Change Renewable Energy and Food Security Presidential Initiative led by Dr. Kande Yomkeda. We are designing policies and programs and laying the framework for establishing strong partnerships for funding and implementing projects on major cross-cutting thematic areas of national and global significance. Agriculture is the mainstay of our economy. Recognizing the core importance and extreme vulnerability of agriculture in Sierra Leone, we are focusing on resilience and innovation within this sector, leveraging technology and forward thinking strategies for climate adaptation. Our, our overarching aspiration as enshrined in our national development plan is clear. Achieve food security and nutrition, food and nutrition security by 2030 through climate smart practices bolstered by renewable energy throughout the agricultural value chain. Your Excellencies, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, Meaningful inclusion and intergenerational dialogue are crucial to achieving SDG 13, to take urgent action to combat climate change and its impacts. In Sierra Leone, we consider our women equal partners for development. We passed the Progressive Gender Equality and Women's Empowerment Bill which guaranteed by law a minimum of 30% representation of women for all appointive and elective positions. My government is committed to promoting the inclusion of women in climate resilience programs and the participation of women in decision-making for climate change adaptation and mitigation governance at all levels. We must harness our geographic, our demographic dividends on the continent and involve our youthful population in our climate adaptation and mitigation efforts throughout 
by involving the youth in everything that we do. Sierra Leone's quest for environmental resilience hinges upon our capacity to address climate finance, build local competencies, and refine our legislative blueprints, and etc. Solutions like carbon markets, innovative debt swaps, and novel financial tools, such as leveraging our natural resources, may be our bridge to surmount the fiscal chasm. Our appeal is clear. Sierra Leone seeks equitable, equitable, nimble, and timely access to climate financing. We ask for unbarred access to new climate change adaptation and mitigation technologies and shared knowledge. Our salvation from escalating climate crises lies in collective wisdom and concerted efforts. Another challenge is our institutional prowess in designing programs that attract climate finance is still developing. We yearn for guidance and backing to booster our legislative architecture, especially concerning forest conservation. Your Excellencies, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, while shared, the responsibility for climate adaptation and mitigation is not and should not be evenly distributed. Expecting countries like Sierra Leone to be at the brunt of a crisis that scarcely, contrib it scarcely contributed to without robust support from the primary emitters, the industrial giants, is fundamentally unjust. Our stance is unequivocal. We are here to collaborate, not to capitulate. We seek cooperation, not charity. The actions of significant polluters must pivot from mere declarations and vague commitments to actionable, technology-driven reparations. It is a demand grounded in the technical feasibility of climate justice, not just its moral imperative. A unified front against the existential crisis is not just desired, it is imperative. As I close, I implore all of us present, the hourglass of action is dwindling, and the sands of time wait for none. Let's come together, not just in spirit, but in action but in actionable solidarity, for in unity we find just strength, but not just strength, but salvation. Thank you. Another round of applause.